John and I are both very tall, so we'll see if I can get that up there. I am so thrilled that this room is full. I absolutely love seeing young professionals out in action. I cut my entrepreneurial teeth here in Wichita, peddling cell phones the size of small suitcases around Wichita back in the Basinger Police Supply early days. Many of your parents, or some of you in this room, may have bought your very first cell phone from me or somebody at Basinger's. And I appreciate having that rich, rich tradition, that rich, rich entrepreneurial history here in Wichita to grow on. And I am thrilled that so many of you are actively being a part of that tonight, too. There are a million things you could be doing in Wichita tonight, aside from coming here to hear John Rolfe give a boring speech. <laughs> we go to church together, so this will go on throughout the whole campaign. Uh, listen, I have the tremendous, tremendous pleasure of representing Coalition for a Better Wichita. Like any great coalition, it's this really wildly diverse group of people, and we kind of started out over coffee shop banter, people griping about this, or a great idea about this, or thinking maybe this would be a better solution for Wichita. But at the end of the day, we all agreed the 1% sales tax that the city was proposing was not the way to move Wichita forward. Now understand, if I, say, if I say nothing else you remember, please remember this. We are not some old group of complaining naysayers. It would be really easy to envision us just griping about the sales tax. But it's not that. It's young families, it's professionals, it's senior citizens, it's just this wildly diverse group of people who really care about Wichita. Lots of business owners, lots of people like Blake and I, my husband, who have chosen to build businesses here in Wichita and provide jobs to the community. We send our kids to school here, we love the housing prices here, we love the fact that it's safe, we love the fact that we can get to the airport in 20 minutes, have you tried that anywhere else? We absolutely love Wichita, we're passionate about Wichita as a coalition, but again, we just adamantly believe the sales tax isn't the way to move Wichita forward, and I'll, I'll explain why we believe that. I'm going to touch briefly on each of the four pieces of the tax, just to give you an idea of who we are and kind of how we've come to this uh, line of thinking. Quickly on street maintenance. The fact that we're even discussing a sales tax for something that should already be maintained by our current tax dollars is absolutely ridiculous. I don't need to say a whole lot more about that. It speaks to mismanagement, and I'm reminded that even snow removal couldn't, have been ha couldn't be handled properly last year. You're already paying tax dollars for street maintenance. Let that one go. Regarding transit, how exciting that UberX launched here last week. How many of you have used Uber before, either here or somewhere else? Great, I love seeing all those hands up because I'm an entrepreneur. I love the entrepreneurial idea that Uber brings. Free market answers, in my opinion, are deeply connected to the future of transportation. I think the idea of the big, expensive, empty buses is heading on down the road. Instead, what about these um, free market and entrepreneurial ideas connected to things like Uber or Lyft or I recently heard that Topeka, Little Topeka has launched this program of bike sharing. I don't know how it works but bikes are apparently ridden and left and then maybe there's an app that tells you where to go and get it. I don't really care about all those details. What I care about is the fact that somebody had a really great idea to solve a transportation issue and the city said give it a shot. That's exciting to me. I've spent years working with people with disabilities, and I've spent years still <coughs> spending time working with people who are poor and struggle with transportation. It's tough to find a job that matches with the housing, that matches with the busing system. That's the struggle we face all the time. But listen, what about an idea like a voucher program that's connected to Uber or connected to Lyft or connected to a taxi service? Those ideas give folks who maybe don't have a lot of options, options and independence. I love that idea. I love the idea of people having a choice with transportation versus saying, this is your only option, you have to, you have to create your whole life around this transportation choice. Instead, let's let the entrepreneurial spirit soar here in Wichita and come up with some great transportation options. The jobs fund is my favorite place to, to my, my favorite piece to talk about. No matter how you slice it, people feel like this is going to be a slush fund. People feel like the money will go to political insiders 
and donors through backroom deals. It's a perception based on some past city hall behavior that will continue to haunt some of those folks, and it's a perception that's going to take a long time to change. People want a simple five-step recipe to economic growth and job growth, and let me tell you, if that existed, every city would be doing it. If incentives really worked, every city in America would have incentive packages through the roof, and there would be no unemployment issues. It doesn't work that way. You won't go out and find any data to support that incentives work a long time. You might see a balance sheet bump or you might see um, a little bit of anecdotal evidence, but you will not find long-term evidence to support that incentives work. What people want in business, what entrepreneurs want, is a favorable tax climate and a favorable regulatory climate. We want to be innovative. We want to let our entrepreneurial spirit soar. And we want to do that through small business. Small business is what provides jobs. Not giving money to big corporations. Not big corporations like Coke, not like Boeing, not like any of these groups that have taken incentive money. They don't need that incentive money to grow. They certainly don't need that incentive money to do business. Let's leave the average of $240 per family in Wichita in the pockets of the taxpayers. Let them decide how best to spend it. The most important piece of this tax is water, and I want you to listen very carefully to me. We don't oppose a water solution. Wichita absolutely needs a long-term water solution. But we've been blessed with tremendous rainfall. Cheney Lake is full, there's water in the big ditch. We're predicting, uh, the experts are predicting a very wet winter. We have time to peel the water piece away from this disastrous bundle that's attached to with the streets and, and the jobs and, and the, um, the old buses and vote on water separately, maybe the spring election, maybe the fall election. The state is about ready to unveil a 50-year water vision for the state. That includes Wichita. It includes potential funding mechanisms. Local legislators I'm talking to, they're shaking their heads, scratching their heads saying, why is the city getting out in front of what potentially could be solutions that connect to Wichita? It makes no sense. We have time to wait. If the city believes we're in a water emergency that needs immediate sales tax money, then why did they weigh it down by tying it to a jobs fund, an incentives package that they know the citizens are wary of? That's suspicious to me. I am looking forward to your questions and, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to give you some great answers. And I'll now turn it over to my friend from church, John Hall.